So for today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at how Alan Edmonds' soles have changed over the last 30 years. And we're going to be looking at the insoles a little bit and also the lining. But this is going to be limited to the standard shoes and not their Shell Cordovan offerings or the Independence Collection. I will also give you some of my personal opinions on why I think this has gradually happened over the last 30 years. So recently I picked up this vintage pair of shoes. These are a Sanford shoe in oak aniline, which is sort of like a dark walnut or walnut mixed with chili. It's a really nice color. It's also the oldest shoe in my entire collection, dating back to 1989. And the reason I know that is because on the older Allen Edmonds shoes, there's a four-digit number on the lining, and the last digit is the year number. And I also know these were not made in 1999 because the insole is the design of the 1980s. So just taking a quick look at the outsoles, you can see just how beautiful they are despite the odd aging spots that have come on the soles after some time. You can see the stitching looks really nice. There's these little dark detailed lines all over the sole on the edges. Also, it's worth pointing out that these reminded me immediately of Alden soles that they still currently make. And just see for yourself, you can see how similar they look on this pair of Alden shoes that I owned when they were new. Now looking at the sole edges, you can see something really interesting on these very old shoes from the 80s, and that is the wheeling or fudging was done so beautifully, very small, perfectly detailed, and you can also see how the stitching is hidden underneath the upper somehow. They did some kind of hidden stitching on these older AE shoes. However, it's interesting to point out that the rubber heels really have not changed at all in the last 30 years only a very slight logo removal, but otherwise the same. The maroon colored lining is very soft and it feels great on your feet. And also the insoles, while having a little bit of a less forgiving feel compared to the current AE insoles, they feel a little bit more supportive. Now, if you look at these shoes from 1989, you can see that the logo, the stitched logo on the lining is really well done. There's so much detail and I appreciate these little touches that they used to put into their shoes. Now the second pair of shoes I own is also a Sanford. I don't know why this model is so plentiful all over eBay. It's probably one of the easiest models you can find. It's a little tricky to find them new, but there's still plenty of them out there. But anyway, this is a burgundy polished cobbler version of it made in 1998. As you can see, it looks very similar to the one I just showed you, but if you look at the side of the edges where the soles are, you can see they no longer hide the stitching, and it looks more like the current Allen Edmonds stitching that they're using to this day. I can say that really there's not much a difference between this and the 1989 version on the outsole. It looks very much the same, just a logo change. It's very nicely done, very beautiful. The insole also feels pretty similar to the 1989 version, but one difference I'll call out is that the lining on these shoes from the late 90s and early 2000s, this kind of yellowish lining, I've always found this the most comfortable era of AE in terms of lining that I've been able to try. I don't know what it is about this type of lining that they use, but it's just very soft and very comfortable. Again, you can see these were made in 1998 because the last digit of the four digit number is an eight. But one other interesting detail I should mention about these older AE shoes from 20 plus years ago, and that is that they used to include these small holes in the lining in the toe box. And I assume they did this because they wanted the shoes to breathe better. That's a detail that probably most people wouldn't even notice, but it's something they used to put in their shoes, but sadly no longer do. In regards to the stitched logo, again, it's still very nicely done, very similar to the 1989 version. I also have this pair of Park Avenues from 2002. These have the exact same insole and outsole as the Sanford that I just showed you. I've worn these several times. They are very supportive, very solid shoes, very comfortable. Everything about them is just solid. 
and I'll talk a little bit about that more later. Now, moving on to the third pair, this is a pair of Delray shoes. I'm not sure exactly when they were made because they had stopped dating them by this time, but if I were to guess, I would say 2007 or maybe 2008. It was probably before the infamous black insoles were used, which was around 2008, 2009. Which speaking of, for those of you that have not tried the infamous black insoles, I can say honestly they were not that bad. The only negative thing I could say about them is that when your feet would perspire, for some reason the black insoles would feel a little bit more slick. But overall, I don't think they were any less comfortable than the other insoles that they used at the time. Overall, these are really not that much different from the Sanfords I just showed you. The outsoles are still pretty much identical. The insole does feel a little bit less forgiving. I don't know what it is about this time period of shoes, but these white insoles, I found them to be a little bit less comfortable than the ones from the early 2000s and the ones that followed later. But aside from these very small changes, the shoes were very much the same as the Sanford that you saw earlier. These shoes have beautiful outsoles, beautiful insoles, the lining is great, everything about them is very solid. Now, moving on to the next model, which is a 2015 version of the Bourbon Carlisle, this is where you can see some real changes. If you look at the outsole, these have been worn obviously, but you can see still that they do look quite a bit different. You still have some of the lines that were there from the previous outsoles, but they're not nearly as nice, and the color has also changed to this different type of leather outsole. And I don't honestly know if it was just a supply issue and that's the reason they changed or if it was just an intentional move to reduce the costs. Also, when you wear them, they don't feel quite as heavy or firm as the older ones did. There's just something about these that feels a little bit lighter. I'm not saying they're bad or terrible quality, it's just they're just different than the previous ones. Also, the lining had changed by this time a little bit it was noticeably less soft, not awful or anything like that, but not as good as what was on the older shoes from 2007. Now, I haven't mentioned the heel counters yet, but by this time of 2015, you could definitely tell they were not quite the same quality that they were previously. And to be fair, AE has never been on par with Alden in this regard, but they definitely were better 20, 30 years ago. The newer ones are just not quite as strong and firm as the older ones, and also a little bit smaller. Now moving on to a pair from 2017. This is a pair of Park Avenues in Midnight Navy. I've only worn these a very small amount, so they look almost brand new. But you can start to see how even more details were removed from the outsoles. We no longer have any of those detailed lines, we just have the stitching to show. The lining is about the same as the Carlisle that I just showed you, and overall they really don't feel much different from the 2015 shoes. And it's also worth noting that they still have the stitched AE logo inside the shoes on the right shoe. Which brings us to our present time with this pair of Olive Park Avenues. These were from 2020. You can see they're very much the same as the 2017 Park Avenues that I just showed you. However, They've removed the nice little stitched logo that used to be on the lining of the right shoe. That's gone, sadly. Ever since 2019, that's been gone. But overall, I don't think they really feel that different from the Carlisle shoes that I showed you from 2015 or the Park Avs I showed you in Midnight Navy. So you can see over time that many of the small details have been taken out of the shoes. So why is this? Well, I can't give you a 100% certain answer, but I can give you what I believe is probably going on. So don't take this as fact, this is just my own speculation. Lately there's been something in the news people have been talking about called shrinkflation, which is when a company gives you the same product, but they find some way to reduce the actual product so you're paying the same price as before. For example, if some kind of food they might fill it up with less food, but you're still paying the same price. See, if we go back to 2003 and look at the Shoe Mart, you can compare prices back then. 
and Allen Edmonds and Alden shoes were actually very similarly priced, both in that $275 to $350 range. So what's happened since 2003? Well, of course, we've seen a lot of inflation, but I think Allen Edmonds has been reluctant to increase their prices too much because the psychology of having to pay $600 for a pair of shoes is really hard on the customer. You really have to be convinced that you're getting something that's worth your money. And Allen Edmonds, let's face it, they've always not been as good as Alden, even though they're very good shoes. Alden's always been known as being a step up from AE. So you've seen Alden prices go up to $600 in many cases. I think that's because Alden has not cut corners on their product very much, and they've had to keep the prices going up in order to pay everyone that's working for them. So the point here is, is that I don't think Alden is going up because they want to go up. I think they're just going up because that's the only way they can do it and keep the quality the same. With Allen Edmonds, I think they've been reluctant to raise the price, so they've tried to keep it around that $350 to $400 range, and they've had to find small ways to reduce their costs. And I'm not criticizing them for this. I understand it's a business for them. The bottom line is they've got to be profitable. That's the most important. I think that's the reason why you started to see these little small details go away. And I think that's also the reason why if you compare a shoe like the Hopkinson from the Independence Collection, if you compare it to the 2002 Park Avenue that I own in Merlot, I would say they feel very similar. They both have a similar feel to the soles. The soles on the Hopkinson are more sturdy, a little bit heavier, better support, but so are the soles on the 2002 Park Avenues. They're very much similar. And I think Allen Edmonds has offered the same quality as those shoes from 20 years ago, but you had to pay a premium of $500 to get the Independence Collection in order to receive that same quality. The point of this video is not to criticize Allen Edmonds. It's just to show how they've kind of been forced to change with the times. And they've also changed a lot in the last 30 years as a company They've expanded quite a bit. They're much larger than Alden. So you're never going to see an exact apples to apples comparison because really they're two very different companies. But if I'm right in my speculation, this brings up one very important question. And that is, will Allen Edmonds continue to find ways to reduce costs to keep the price the same? Or will they raise prices and keep the quality the same? because I see that as the fork in the road that they're facing right now. And I would rather have them err on the side of keeping the quality higher, but we shall see if that happens. So I hope you found this interesting. In my next video, I'm going to be looking at the Olive Landon boot from Allen Edmonds. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.